All right, we are back with more of the Blitz. Never too much football on the Friday night around here. Yeah, that's right, Joe. <laughs> and how about this matchup? Pearl trying to end their two-game skid against the Vikings, who have just one loss on the season. And we head out to Pearl, where the which is the home of the Pirates, but it was the visitors, Warren Central, who felt right at home. And it's going to be Jack Wright who hits Trey Hall. And look at number one go. Check out the speed. Gets a block, and he's going to be gone. That's a touchdown, and Warren Central takes the early lead. Later, the Vikings, they show they can get it through the air and on the ground game as well. Check out Mark Gray. He gets the carry off the play fake, and he's going to make a beeline for the end zone, and he's going to outrun everybody and get it. It looked like Warren Central was going to run away with this one, guys, but Pearl, they're going to find some offense and answer. Jamari on Turner, he's going to get an opening and hit his pay dirt. Lots of green grass for him, and that's going to be a touchdown. But Warren Central, they come away with the win, 38-21, to and improved to 6-1 on the year. All right, and out at South Jackson Field, not far from our studio, Forest Hill at home, taking on the Tigers of Canton. Both teams with one win on the year, and uh, Canton's Eric Gilkey hits Shermar Porter for a small game there. And on the next play, Jeremy Bates tries the middle, but he gets a short game as well. The Forest Hill defense working strong. Gilkey. Going back to the air, hits Shamar Porter, this time for big yardage. Porter with the stiff arm, and he gets inside the 10. And another pass to Porter there. He gets inside the red zone, and Gilkey's going to call his own number for the score. No final score reported there, but Ken was up 7 to nothing after that big play for the Tigers. All right. All right, and Murrah visited Starkville. Uh, Murrah visited Starkville tonight, and it wasn't as bad of a game early on as uh, we, you might have thought. Opening drive, Trey Pettis put on a sweet juke move, getting him space, and he headed for the end zone. But at the last minute, Travis Robinson, he's going to poke the ball free. Murrah recovers at their own yard line. And after a Murrah punt, Starkville, they were knocking on the door again, but this time they were going to find the end zone. Curtis Willis from a few yards out put the Yellow Jackets on the board. Next Murray drive. Check this catch out by Peyton Johnson. We're going to wait for it here. We got a huddle. Now here's the catch from Peyton Johnson. One handed tip to himself, and that's going to be all the way down into the red zone. Unfortunately, Murray would turn it over on downs, but what a catch from him. And ensuing, ensuing Starkville drive, Trey Petty. He missed last week because of a suspension, and Starkville certainly missed throws like this. And the Tupelo loss, beautiful pass to Jalen York. Yellow Jackets back in the red zone, and Starkville, they go on to win 49-13. to Let's check out some more scores from the area. Brandon, they stay undefeated, beating Meridian, the Wildcats, 48 to 15. And the defending state champs, they dropped their second straight loss, 34 to nothing, to undefeated Tupelo. And then Clinton falls to Oxford on the road, 24 to 22, to end a three-game winning streak. And Florence now on a three-game skid after falling to West Jones, 34 to seven. Let's head to our JPS goals. Jim Hill falls on the road to Neshoba Central, 35 to seven. And how about Provine getting a road win, 19 to 17, over Holmes County Central to get back to 500. And finally, Raymond improves to seven and one with a win over South Pike. And Northwest Rankin bounces back after a loss to beat Pedal, 37 to 22. All right, you've been waiting for this. The best plays of the night, the high five, the top five plays that we saw. You're going to see them coming up next on The Blitz.